Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We are at uh, Mobile World Congress 2015 here in Barcelona in Spain. And I'm talking with Pierre Mieles, who is one HP Mobility Business Enterprise Group in MIA at HP. Hello, Martin. Hello, Pierre. Welcome. Thanks for talking to us. This used to be, this is Mobile World Congress. This show, venerable as it is, used to be about mobile phones and applications and that sort of thing. That is all changing. Mobility is now a given globally. So we, everybody expects mobility, everybody has mobility, and we're seeing changes within that context in virtualization of the network, SDN, NFV, and so on. Um, what's your impression of the show? It's the second day, it's very busy. You've been here since before the show started. What's your impression of the show? There's always a new theme and a change every year. What's this year's? You know, Martin, thanks for having me. It's amazing how the show this year combines very different industries. It's not just about telcos anymore. We saw yesterday Carlos Ghosn uh, come and talk about Renault Nissan and their uh, future of the autonomous car, their partnership with NASA. We saw Mark Zuckerberg come. You know, whole variety of, of industry. Here on our booth in HP, we're having uh, Thomson Reuters demonstrate one of their financial apps. We have ABB showing an application on field workers. We have Emma Airlines showing how uh, mobility is taking over the airplane, believe it or not, and uh, <laughs> enabling the crew on airplanes to actually drive some transactions and improve the customer experience when you fly. So it's a much more diverse world and mobility is taking over the whole industry, really. What do you think are the most interesting and exciting development? I think it's really the realization of organization that they need to mobilize now. Uh, because if they don't, they're going to have to play catch up two years down the road because other companies will have entered their markets and mobilized a business process that they haven't thought about. So, so that is really around business transformation and technology enabling that business transformation. Thank you. And what have you seen so far, the people you've been speaking to, what are they most interested in as far as what you do and what HP's doing? You know, they see that there will be 200 billion sensors out in the world by 2020. Yeah. There'll be a network acceleration where we're all moving towards 5G. There will be an acceleration of the network internally, uh, you know, with the 802.11 uh, AC, uh, the, the, the norm. Uh, and cloud services are, are, are being made available to a much broader set of, of individuals. So, you know, people are trying to capture that opportunity, increased number of sensors, increased number of data coming to us, more interactions happening with consumers, with citizens. They see the opportunity. Now, this is, Mobility is very mature from a consumer standpoint. From an enterprise and from a public sector, Absolutely. it's just starting. Yeah. And, uh, and that's a huge opportunity for vendors, for uh, service providers, and obviously for manufacturers such as HP. Now given that context then, what do you do on a daily basis? As far as, you know, within your uh, mobility business, yes. what, is the, what are you concentrating on at the moment given the fact that enterprise and business is new to mobility? Well, we're really focusing on their business and finding the right partners to enable a better business outcome. You know, HP has a very broad portfolio uh, in, in mobility, and anywhere from devices, you know, whether it's uh, laptops or tablets, but also mobile print. It's, it's about uh, helping organization virtualize their environment, uh, get on the network, uh, with an easier way. I mean, you just seen yesterday the announcement of HP acquiring Aruba. This is an extra commitment from HP in this uh, wireless uh, networking world. Um, unified communication, we're helping them um, uh, with, with our communication around employees and when they're on the go, when they're being mobilized. And then of course, services and applications. You know, what's interesting about applications is that there are you know, let me take an example. There are over 3,000 Android versions out there. And I'll think about all the different form factors that an app developer has to think about. Now, we've got tools that enable to simulate all those different form factors, all of those different uh, uh, operating system environment, iOS, Android, uh, Windows, and to allow the best possible experience for that developer, to enable him to have uh, his users 
uh, look at uh, the, the application is developed in the best possible way. I was hearing yesterday uh, a statistic that was brought up by Facebook, where they said there are three million applications, believe it or not, out there. And after 10 days, 98% of those applications have been dropped. So it's critical that we get the right experience and that that experience is constantly checked, evaluated, you know, another thing that you can come and see in our booth, which is really exciting, is a product called App Pulse. And App Pulse allows developers and service providers to monitor the usage of that app. How long does a person stay on a page? You know, that's, mm. Where does he go? Does, is there a problem with the application? It's the whole monitoring space, which is absolutely critical to drive a perfect uh, mobility experience. So lots of stuff that we have to show, and, and in my job, our role is to combine this to really make sense for the, for the business customer, to make sure that it provides him the best experience for his customers, but also for his employees. I was talking to one of your colleagues yesterday about apps and how important they are, and how a bad app can taint a brand, can affect revenue and so on. I wasn't aware of this, but some apps are dropped in two seconds. So somebody will download it to a device, look at it, not like it, takes too long to load, gone. That's true. Never comes back That's again, true. very interesting. An organization spends hundreds of thousands of dollars in developing mm -hmm. some apps, and if it's not the right app, and, and you know, the thing is, once you have the app, it's not, it's not, you're not done. You have to constantly improve on the app. You've got to ensure that it's connected to the cloud, yeah. because mobility is a window into the cloud. Yeah. You have to ensure that it collects information that it can feed into big data. And you've got to absolutely ensure you've got security and privacy. In the consumer space, people are willing to give us some privacy in order to get more value. In the enterprise space, privacy and security is fundamental. And that's why with the new style of IT, which is HP strategy, we connect mobility to cloud, big data, and security. A lot has been said, Pierre, about mobility being a disrupting force in the workplace. Other people say, no, it's not a disruption, it's a natural evolution given the technologies that we have. What's your take on that? I think it's fundamentally disruptive. It's fundamentally disruptive. When you see the likes of uh, Uber coming and disrupting uh, uh, such a market, you, sure. you, see, yeah. you see what uh, what WhatsApp, I saw the other day a statistic saying that last year WhatsApp managed as many messages as all of the telcos combined. Now, I was reading this in the press, whether the press was right or wrong, <laughs> they certainly manage a lot of messaging and disrupting an industry. So it is disruptive. And the challenge for the organization is mobilize your business now and create a competitive advantage or wait two years and having to play catch up. All of this, of course, is about a value proposition. Enterprises, businesses want something out of this at the end of the day that will go to the bottom line. It will increase their efficiency, sure, work throughput, etc. but they want bottom line improvement in the end. How does mobility help in that regard? Well, you know, every organization is different. One, some wants to increase their revenue, uh, some want to reduce their costs, and mobility certainly helps in both. You, you help, uh, you know, engage with a customer, exactly in front of his customer with a mobile device. You can help reduce cost because, for example, I was just uh, uh, recently in South Africa where uh, this organization had field workers that they went out and uh, serviced customers and they had to route exactly where that field worker went and mobility actually was enabling them with geolocation to have the right routing, making sure that the field worker had the right parts and therefore saving some time and you know, one thing that mobility brings is improved customer satisfaction and customer loyalty. Is making sure you get that connection, that engagement with your customers, but I would say also with your employees. Making sure that your employees stay with your company because you're giving them the tools to do an effective job. One of the things which is, let's say, that one of the potential downsides of something like NFV and SDN is that it is disruptive in a way that wasn't quite expected because organizational psychology and the way that workflows have traditionally worked and the workplace has been and the work style, all that has to change. And in a large organization, that is very difficult to do. Do you find that being a problem? You know, uh, ourselves in HP, we, we actually moved completely on wireless. You know, a lot of our staff works from home or works on the field, or works in the office seamlessly. 
Uh, the cables are moving out of the office, for sure, everything is going wireless. And uh, you know, all those token rings uh, that you, you had in the past, those little yeah. uh, dongles to, to access yeah. the network, that's going away. You know, I, things are becoming simpler. And yes, the workforce is changing, the work style is changing, and technology has to support that, absolutely. How are HP platforms supporting the infrastructure for CSPs to provide these enhanced customer services and digital services? And can you tell us about the mobility maturity model and how you use that to engage with customers? Oh, you picked a really interesting topic there because you know when we talk with organizations, we ask them, are you more in, how would you rate yourself? Are you in mobile chaos right now? <laughs> where you have your users saying, connect this device, bring, connect, yep. you know, I'm bringing my own device, connect it. And you got your lines of business that are saying, you know, I need to mobilize my business. I'm going to develop an app, and they go to IT and say, if you can't develop it for me, I'll, I'll just go and and uh, and, and uh, do it myself. And without taking into consideration the security, the manageability, the uh, uh, connectivity that IT has to to figure out. So, so we're asking our organizations, where are you? Are you mobile chaos, or are you truly a mobile enterprise? And then we got you know mobile chaos, mobile silos, mobile departments, and mobile mm -hmm. enterprise. And 90% of them say they're in mobile chaos or mobile silos. That's the point I was going to ask you, because I was going to say there surely can't be that many who say, no, we are absolutely fine. Most of them must say we need help. A few of them say we're already there. Right. And very often those are telcos because you know that's their business. But you know, as we look at the market, HP alone cannot do it. You know, we got a partner, and partner is in our DNA. Over 80% of our business is done with partners, and we've done it since. You know, partnering is is what we've done since HP was 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 formed. And uh, in this mobility market, it's really all about partnership. It's going out there and looking at which are the key contributors of certain technologies or services or applications that we can partner with to provide the right value proposition to customers. So it's a huge opportunity. I think we're past the big wave of growth for consumer. We're now entering the new big wave of growth for the enterprise and the SMBs. They're looking for expertise. They're looking for smart technology, smart expertise, and a smart experience. Okay, we talked about the mobility maturity model. You place according to what we've just been talking about, whether it's mobile chaos, silos, or whatever, right. you, you place an organization into that matrix, and then what's the strategy going forward from that? How do you, how do you ap apply that and employ that to help them to get where they want to go? Okay, so the way we engage is we sit down with them, we look at their business priorities, which is paramount. This is the landscape in which they operate, the challengers that are attacking their business, the enabling technologies that we have, and we build a plan. And this really starts with a plan. There's so many technologies out there, from HP and from others, that it has to be first looking at the business priority and understand how one company can help integrate the mobility strategy with big data, with the cloud, ensuring security, and bring all of that together. There are very, very few players on the market that can talk about devices, about print, about connecting, uh, yeah, some people talk about the Internet of Things, but think about it. You know, everybody talks about the cloud. All those sensors and those mobile devices, you bring that to the ground. This is about fog. This is about <laughs> fog networking. You're connecting everything, making sense of it all. And then being able to also talk about the, the, the transforming a business with applications, mobilizing that business process into applications. HP's got that spectrum to be able to cover the end user concerns, IT main challenges of access, connect, securing, and managing the environment, and mobilizing the business with app development capabilities that very few people know. We've got over 800 developers of mobile apps. They're day in, day out developing, we already have hundreds of apps already in the market. Let's move forward and bring the interview to a close, Pierre. You've talked about the initiatives and, uh, and what you're doing. How are they going to evolve? And this isn't, this isn't a, you know, we've reached the point of perfection and everything stops here. You're going to continue evolving this. How will you fit this into your larger strategy going forward? And what do you see as being the future? Let's say we're back here this time next year at Mobile World Congress 2016. Um, what changes do you expect to see as far as HP and mobility is concerned? So, to your question, mobility is part of the HP strategy. You know HP is splitting into two organizations. Indeed. Mobility is a trend that will absolutely be responded to by both organizations, and they will collaborate to address those needs, number one. It's part of 
HP's current strategy of new style of IT, as I mentioned, there's security, big data, cloud, and mobility, and mobility is a very, very strong pillar. It's actually a unifying element for a lot of those different uh, pillars. A year down the road, I would say, look at Mobile World Congress and what we see. Uh, <laughs> we've seen those past two days, all those different industries. You'll see more of that. It's mobility is getting out of simply being a niche industry. It's going to touch every single element of the industry we live in, every single element of the public sector. And so, uh, one year down the road, you'll see being HP being a key player in this mobility play across all of those industries. It's fascinating because we've got used to seeing cars here and the other stuff, but looking just over there, off screen, but just over there, there's Oral-B intelligent toothbrushes. Now, who would ever have thought that they would be at Mobile World Congress? It just shows how quickly things are changing and how different the world is. Pierre Milles, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure, thank you. Thank you.